So um, today I wanted to kind of talk about a topic that is kind of difficult, I think, for some medical students, myself included, to understand when we're learning it. But I thought I would break it down and think of kind of a kind of an easy way to remember and understand this concept of pulmonary hypertension. Um, so I guess the most important thing initially is to kind of define what it is. And basically it's when you have as the name suggests high pressure within the pulmonary circulation. In particular, the number you have to remember is greater than 25 millimeters of mercury. So that kind of is the definition of pulmonary hypertension. Now, I think the hardest part of understanding all of this really is kind of thinking about the causes of pulmonary hypertension because there's like a large number of potential causes. And I think the traditional breakdown actually um, identifies five groups or ideologies for the causes of pulmonary hypertension. And that's kind of what I want to focus this video on because that's the part that's hardest to understand and remember. But I think I'm going to use the traditional five group method and break it down in an easy to understand and remember way. And so the way I like to really begin thinking about it is just thinking about kind of the pulmonary circulation in general, right? Because it's you have your systemic and you have your pulmonary circulation. The pulmonary circulation kind of evolve, involves the right heart into your lungs and then your left heart. And so I have this picture here, which I took from this website down here. Um, I think it's called the British Lung Foundation. I don't know. I just thought it was a simple, easy picture to, to, to kind of use. And so you have, you know, blood coming in from your um, body into the right atrium, going into your right ventricles, going up to the lungs, um, through the pulmonary arteries. And obviously at the pulmonary capillaries where you have, you know, gas exchange occurring. And it comes out through the pulmonary um, veins back into the left side of the heart. So left atrium, left ventricle, and it goes back onto the body. So this is your pulmonary um, circulation, right? Or, and so when I think about the causes of pulmonary hypertension, I want to think, of, I kind of use this to kind of ask where can things kind of go wrong, right? And so one place is obviously, well, this part where blood is going to the lungs, right? And so I think of that, I think of group one, which is um, pulmonary arterial hypertension. What else can go wrong? Well, it could be that the blood leaving the lungs, right? It could be something wrong here, right? And so that, that's the second part. That, that could be, um, it could be due to pulmonary venous hypertension. What about the third part? The third part could be the lungs themselves, right? And so group three is actually underlying kind of lung disease or hypoxia. What else can go wrong? Well, you could have... Um, clots that form within kind of the um, pulmonary circulation and that's to be due to you know chronic thromboembolic embolic, uh, disease and so that causes these um, emboli that go into the lungs and block off the circulation so that's number four and the fifth one I just drew out here because it's kind of the miscellaneous or um, multifactorial one and that one we'll talk later and I have kind of a way that I use to remember that and so I want to talk about group one first. And you see on the side here, I have kind of a, um, a list kind of, of key points about group one. And so I think of group one, a point of hypertension, um, or two hypertension, I mean, um, I think of three kind of key types. And one of them is idiopathic. Um, another one is heritable, her heritable, sorry, and then secondary. And so the most common cause that is actually idiopathic, right? There's, there's really just... And as, as it sounds, you don't really know why. Um, and that's the majority of cases. Um, and now there is also this fairly important thing that you have to know, and it is this heritable cause. And that's related to this mutation. Um, it's an inactivating mutation of BMPR2. And what that does is it results in kind of this increased vascular smooth muscle proliferation. And so... Um, I don't really have a way to remember BMPR2, and they just have to remember that. But then the mechanism itself kind of makes sense because if you have this increased vascular smooth muscle proliferation, then you're going to have um, issues with with kind of increased pressure. Um, think of it as kind of as you're you're constricting right the vasculature even more because there's just more stuff there. 
Um, so that's kind of the heritable cause. And then the, 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 the one that's kind of harder to remember are all these kind of secondary causes of um, pulmonary arterial hypertension. And so the mnemonic that I have really is this um, drugs can cause HIV and severe pulmonary hypertension. And that makes sense, right? So drugs can cause HIV and severe pulmonary hypertension. And so let's break that down. First one is drugs. Well, what drugs do you want to think about? You want to think of amphetamines and cocaine. Second one is uh, the first C is for connective tissue diseases. And this is your systemic sclerosis, your lupus, uh, dermatomyositis, polymyositis, and Sjogren's syndrome. Right? So these connective tissue diseases can also cause uh, pulmonary hypertension. And then the other next C is for congenital heart disease. And this includes, for example, your ASDs and your VSDs. And in general, you have this right to left shunt. What happens when you have right to left shunt? You have increased volume um, in kind of that right heart. And over time, that will result in this pulmonary hypertension. And just kind of as a side note, another high yield fact is when you have this pulmonary hypertension that develops over time because of this increased volume in that right heart, you can have something called Eisenmenger syndrome, where now because the pressure of the right heart is so high, blood actually shunts from right to left, bypassing the pulmonary um, circulature and resulting in cyanosis. Um, okay, and then HIV obviously stands for HIV. Um, the S in severe stands for schistosomiasis. This is something that people find it hard to remember, but schistosomiasis doesn't just affect the bladder, but it can also affect other parts of your body, including um, causing pulmonary hypertension. And then the P and H in pulmonary hypertension should also remind you of portal hypertension, so back up from the, uh, the, the liver, right? The pulmonary circulation, down, uh, the portal circulation um, within the liver. And so that's these are kind of the causes of secondary um, pulmonary arterial hypertension. So just remember, drugs can cause HIV and severe pulmonary hypertension. Um, if it makes it easier for you, you can use portal hypertension if you want to start a pulmonary. I just wanted to stick pulmonary in there because it reminds me of pulmonary hypertension with the topic that we're talking about. So that's kind of the group one. Um, and again, just remember that the majority are idiopathic. And remember that BMPR2 mutation in the heritable form. Now, what's group two? Well, we, group two is the um, is pulmonary venous hypertension. And so the way I think about this is, you know, the pulmonary veins go into what? Your left heart, right? So this is kind of all the left heart diseases, right? And, you know, when we talk about left heart disease, one of the um, sequelae that can result from, you know, chronic and severe left heart problems is eventually you're going to have this right heart failure, right? Because all that pressure that's increased within the left heart will, will kind of work its way back, increasing pressure within the pulmonary vasculature. And so this is important to remember that the most common type of pulmonary hypertension in general is this pulmonary venous hypertension. Or the way I can, you can think about it also is just because of this uh, left heart disease causing pulmonary hypertension. Um, I think a way that people um, can refer to this, I think, is core pulmonale. So maybe that, I think that's another way, that, another term for this that you should remember and understand. And so, um, and so the causes that can cause left heart disease, there's, there's various, right? But in general, again, it's an increased pressure in the left heart that backs up into the pulmonary. So you could have hypertension, it's a systemic hypertension. You can have, you know, valvular diseases. Those things can um, can lead to this uh, backup of pressure and eventually pulmonary hypertension. Um, and one of the key findings for this is that the hypertension will develop first in the pulmonary veins, right? That that's where kind of it develops first because obviously that's where the pressure backs up from the heart, uh, the left heart, um, and then. I think I just I forgot to mention a key point with um, group one, so if you don't mind me kind of going back and talking about it, but kind of so with with the uh, group two we have you know developing first in the pulmonary veins, but in group one kind of the key finding here you'll have isolated elevations in the pulmonary vascular resistance, and so the distinction between group one and group two is that your left heart pressures aren't going to be increased, right? Whereas in group you know in group two you're going to have that increased um, 
left heart pressure as well. So that's kind of important to remember. Now, group three, we mentioned before, it was lungs, right? So kind of pre-existing lung disease or um, hypoxia. And this is really just pulmonary hypertension that developed secondary to underlying lung disease. And the way I like to remember the causes of this is just think what can go wrong with, with your lungs, right? What kind of problems can your lungs face? Um, and I think there are three kind of main ones that I can really think of. The first one is you could have destruction of your lungs, right? Destruction of the lung parenchyma. And the most common one is really like COPD, right? And so you remember if COPD, the most common cause really kind of the main one is smoking. Um, there are other things related to that that I'll just briefly mention, such as um, you could have alpha-antitrypsin uh, alpha deficiency, which makes your um, lungs more prone or higher risk of um, injury. And then you can also have um, um, various, you know, uh, bronchiectasis, for, you know, so mean cystic fibrosis over time can, can lead to destruction of lung parenchyma. So kind of just keep those things in your mind, things that kind of can destroy lung parenchyma. COPD is kind of the main one that people think of. Um, next one is that you can have lung inflammation and fibrosis. Um, and so that should really clue you into, into interstitial lung diseases. And there are a very, there's like a, a host of different causes from, um, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis to um, your pneumoconiosis or occupational um, ones to hypersensitive pneumonitis. There, there are these different causes, but in general, it's this fibrosis of the lung. And that kind of makes sense. If your lung becomes more fibrotic, it doesn't, it just, that increases the pressure because you have that increased elasticity. Um, and the third one is um, hypoxemic vasoconstriction. And um, this should clue you into kind of two main ones. One is the obstructive sleep apnea. Another one is that people tend to forget actually is chronic high altitude. So if you're chronically kind of in this, um, um, because the pressures up there are reduced, you have kind of less partial pressure oxygen in the atmosphere. So that kind of decreases the driving force for oxygen to your lungs. And so um, over time you can get you know, hypoxia and hypoxemia. So chronic high altitude is, is an important one. And I want to highlight kind of a key point with this too, because um, this is a key physiologic tie-in that's unique to the lungs is this concept of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction, right? In most other places in your body, you know, if there's hypoxia, the goal is to kind of increase flow so that area can get more oxygen. But in the lungs, it's different. In the lungs, when you have regions that are hypoxic, direct that blood flow um, from those hypoxic regions to regions in which um, the lungs are better ventilated. And so again, just to kind of reiterate this point is, um, local vasoconstriction redirects blood from poorly ventilated hypoxic regions towards well ventilated regions. And so that's kind of this key point of hypo hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Now um, let's kind of go on to the fourth group of um, pulmonary hypertension and that is chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. And this one, the key thing to think about is pulmonary emboli, right? So it's clots in the branches of the pulmonary arteries that result in a VQ mismatch. And for another physiologic tie-in, what type? The key one here, remember, is dead space ventilation. You have ventilated alveoli, but they're not perfuse. So that results in dead space ventilation. Um, and the key finding is this insidious onset dyspnea. And I just like to think of it as each additional clot as an additional hit that brings the overall system down another notch. And what you can do with patients in which you suspect they may have a, um, you know, this, this, this issue, you can do a VQ scan of the lungs, which is a ventilation perfusion scan to see if there is that kind of mismatch. Um, so that's kind of um, the uh, fourth group. And I think as a, another important um, point, um, where do a lot of these emboli originate? And I think you should remember that a majority of pulmonary emboli come from um, the deep veins within the lower extremities, so such as uh, DVTs. So just keep that in mind as well. And so the last group I have is kind of this multifactorial or miscellaneous group. And, um, and this is kind of a group that's very difficult to remember because there isn't as um, direct of a, you can't really look at this pathway and kind of figure it out. And so I like to think of a mnemonic that helps me remember this is um, medical school requires blood, sweat, and tears. All right, again, it's medical school requires blood, sweat, and tears. 
and that's definitely true, right? And so um, the M should clue you into kind of metabolic disorders. So metabolic disorders such as glycogen storage, storage diseases and um, Gaucher's disease and thyroid disorder, these can also cause pulmonary hypertension. Um, the S should clue you in to systemic disorders. And so this includes, you know, sarcoidosis, um, neurofibromatosis, and vasculitis. These things can also cause pulmonary hypertension. Um, the R should clue you into chronic renal failure. The blood should, should clue you into hematologic disorders. So chronic hemolytic anemia, splenectomies, um, and then myeloproliferative disease, these can also all cause um, pulmonary hypertension. Um, the S, I thought sarcoidosis was important enough that it needed its own letter. So the S should also include you into um, sarcoidosis. And then finally, the T should include you into tumor obstruction, um, which is kind of like a uh, thromboemboli, but um, the, it's it kind of similar, but just different origin. Um, and so that's kind of it for the five groups. I hope um, these mnemonics and kind of thinking about things in investigation helps you remember what these five groups are. Um, I also wanted to kind of um, talk really briefly about um, a couple other key points with pulmonary hypertension. And um, so I think it's also important to remember um, kind of what happens with it, right? And so um, it results in this arterial sclerosis, um, medial hypertrophy, intimal fibrosis, of the pulmonary arteries and also something that you should know histologically and this is from Pathoma, um, this image is these plexiform lesions that form right and so what are these plexiform lesions um, they are tufts or groups of capillaries placed together as a result of long-standing pulmonary hypertension and so if you see these things and it's highly suggestive that um, you should be thinking of pulmonary hypertension along with you know the the, the symptoms of like dyspnea and other things as well. And so the progression really um, is severe kind of this respiratory distress, right? F from that increased pressure in the pulmonary circulation um, that and it'll lead to kind of cyanosis and eventually right, um, right ventricular hypertrophy. And the death from these patients, as we mentioned earlier, comes from decompensated core pulmonale. And so eventually you can also get, um, you know, right heart failure as a result of this pulmonary hypertension. So I just hope that, um, this was kind of a good um, overview of pulmonary hypertension for you. I apologize the video seems a bit long, but I think after watching this video, you should really have kind of a solid grasp of this topic, um, remembering the five groups and the um, key causes and also some uh, other information and some physiologic tie-ins as well. Hope you enjoyed this video uh, and good luck with your studying.